Oh, this is Safa speaking. Those of you that want to follow my tutorial and my flight, it's uh, Palm, West Palm Beach in Florida, KPBI to Fort Pierce, Treasure Coast International, KFPR. And select runway 28 for departure. I put departures to the D428, right? We'll be using the ILS10 right approach. And then that will get everything configured. But there's one thing we need to do before we take off. We need to just double check our frequency because it's not right. It's missing 0.5 decimals um, in, in the, on the uh, nav. So we have to adjust that for it to work. Okay, so I've made the Velocity Flight DC6 profile here. So there's one thing you need to do. You need to go over your throttle. So you've got throttle axis 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you need to assign them. Otherwise your manifold pressures won't work. So you need to assign it, each one, to throttle axis only, okay? Um, toggle reverse thrust is set to, by default, to the X button on the yoke, the Xbox X button, so that's button number four. And there's one thing that I had to do when it came to using the trim. I had to reverse it, but it might have uh, sorted itself out. To trim. Yeah, I had to click reverse axis, otherwise it was doing it back to front. Okay, so those using the Velocity 1 uh, yoke uh, flight control system, do this and it will make your life so much easier. We set us to take off a 28 right, but if it's a cold start up for you lot, if you um, chose to uh, start your flight on one of the parking ramps, uh, then you can use this fantastic EFB uh, electronic flight bag that they've made and you can actually set to close the cabin doors get remove the cabin stairs the cargo holes and all of that one by one through the option menu here or you can select cold start and it will select the aircraft all switched off state if you want to do the checks one by one or um, or if you want the um, the aircraft to be already ready for the start you just click ready start or if you want it to be already switched on you press ready for taxi but for simplicity sake i've just started us on the wrong way because i know most of you just want to fly the plane without spending too much time doing all the checks right so one thing i'm going to do for this tutorial is i'm going to select a realistic load uh just scrolled up on the mouse wheel there and i'm going to select 34 passengers because that's a usual weight that we'll get and it was recommended by PMDG for just their tutorials too. Wet takeoff. This gives us full power. Now takeoff dry and takeoff wet, that doesn't mean when the runway is dry and when the runway is wet. It does not mean that. Wet means injecting water into the engines to give it more power. Actually I'll do a dry takeoff anyway because it will get us done quicker. But if you want more power you do wet takeoff. I'm going to do that and our engineer is going to go through the checks himself. It's going to save us a load of time. One thing we want to do is remove this gust lock, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to be able to move the yoke and those two middle throttles will not be able to be used. Okay, so we want to select flaps to 20 degrees. That's takeoff. You can do the before takeoff checklist and they'll do that for you. But if you don't want to use this, this is pretty much what you've got to do. If you don't want to use the tablet now he's applying full power the, the engineer does it himself because we set it to automated engineer we reduce the parking brake and we're going to start rolling once it passes 40 manifold pressure then we're going to reduce the parking brake we use our rudders to align it going to get rid of this We're going to rotate around 120 knots. Actually, the aircraft will lift, it will slightly lift up when it wants to go up. And we won't pitch back a lot. In jet aircraft, you pitch back because there's enough power in the engines. But in the DC-6, you just slightly direct it a little bit up and you hold it. So you give the engines a chance to speed up. And once you reach 160 knots, then you can pitch up. Now the engineers will put the gear up for you once we've got positive rate. 
They'll also put the flaps up when the speed gets fast enough to do so. There we are. Then he will set climb power. Meto power is the power before the climb. So I think it's maximum accept. So now we've got 160, we're going to pitch up a little bit more. Yeah, sort out our radios for the time being, they can manage to handle. So climb power is going to be set, they're going to pull the throttles back to 40. So when I say throttles, it's the manifold pressure. We're going to look at these gauges here, the manifold. Each arrow indicates the engine, so you've got two here and four there. But underneath the arrow, you've got one there and three. After takeoff checks complete. It's going to do the after takeoff check list by itself. This is all to make your life simpler. You can go ahead without it. And I'll put a handbook in the description that I make. I made if you want to go and do everything yourself. It's like um, what speeds you should reach, which power levels you should be at, what stage of the flight. I've got it all organized for you, so you can use that to follow along with this tutorial if you wish. Ah, I'm going to set the trim. Can I set the trim? Yes, I can. I'm going to set the trim. I forgot what altitude we're going to climb at, so we're going to just tune to Palm Beach Hotel Loss. Palm Beach departure, United 6 is at 2,000 feet, climbing 7,000 feet. United 6 Palm Beach departure, altimeter 30 decimal 20, continue to Atlee as planned. Bring up our VFR map. We'll see how far we are off the track. So we really should turn. Yeah, we should be turning to the right. Of course, we can use our GPS up here. And you can follow this line here, which means how of course we are. Though that line, that vertical line is to the right. So that means we need to turn to the right to put it in the center. So we can follow that also. And that will guide us back onto our course here. So that's what the purpose of that vertical line means. That's to the right, so we need to go to the right. I could now just show you how we set the uh, auto gyro, which is basically an autopilot, but not, not as advanced as today's technology. So to do that, we put the gyro pilot on first, and then we have to do the mechanical disconnect. So it disconnects <clears throat> us from using the controls. And then altitude control, we don't want that on yet we just want it to control pitch so that being down would only let us control the pitch and we do that by selecting not the trim tab not the, ele not the elevator trim but the uh, climb the, gl uh, the glide climb wheel so you just slightly pull scroll that way to pitch up okay and that's what we should really be aiming for 1000 500 feet per minute now if I want to follow the track I want the autopilot to follow the track we switch it from autopilot mode, mode gyro pilot to localizer and that will turn the aircraft itself and it will follow that vertical track by itself and you'll see it happening here very slowly So if we've come off track, it will take us mostly to the closest next waypoint to get us back on there. So the climb power should be set to 40 inches, which is a 40 inches manifold. So the manifold pressure is measured in inches and uh, 2400 RPM, which you would use this propeller pitch lever, which is this one, this white one. That's the propeller pitch. 
So you'll make sure that's at 2400 here. Now the good thing about PMDG is they've actually modeled uh, parallax error, which means if I'm facing different from different angles, the uh, instruments, for example here, when I'm at the side, it will show me the angle I'm looking at from to the left of it. But when I'm in front of it, you'll notice that is perfectly lined up. But from here, it's slightly off. That's one good thing that you're paying for, which they've modeled. <laughs> so you have to be really precise sometimes. Now, if you've got the automated flight engineer to set everything, you don't have to worry if you've clicked um, takeoff. He will do it himself. And if you click cruise when you're ready to level off, they will also uh, they will they will change all the power settings, the manifold pressure, and RPMs too, and the mixture. There we go. It was supposed to be seven thousand. There we go. So if that's the case, we just use the glide wheel, not the trim wheel, the glide wheel, and we scroll down until our rate of descent is below the zero. So that means we're climbing because we're at 500, now 400 feet per minute. So we're going to go down to something sensible like 500 feet per minute. So we have to tell them, OK, I heard you. Send and maintain 7,000. That's what we're going to do. If I want to speed things up, I just scroll even more. Whoops, be careful not to zoom in because you might press something by mistake like I nearly did. So just put your mouse over there. Uh, see, our vertical speed are showing us we're descending. Now let's speed things up here. Contact Miami Center. I'm going to get rid of that for now. So as you see, it's all lined up here because our autopilot is following this, this line. I also can change it here. So now I've reached it to GPS. So what you're seeing here is what you're also seeing here. The plane is following the line. So all I did was press the GPS button here to show you a better view. But if we want to change to ILS, We'll make sure the frequency is tuned. Oh, before takeoff, we were supposed to do this actually. So we go push this button here, and we will switch those one over because the number on top is the frequency that's in use. So to change it, it has to be in the highlighted one. Now, one one zero decimal five five is the actual real ILS frequency. For some reason, in the sim, there's like a bug with this airport. And then we, we correct it. We flip it back, and when we change it to localizer when we're on the glide path, it will follow that. Okay, let's go back to our normal view. Make sure we're all on track again. We might have veered off by messing around with that, so we put that on and off again, just to double check. Now, as we're coming up to 7,000 feet, which we're supposed to hold, I'll show you what we do. We slowly scroll the opposite direction to slow down that arrow. And then I'm going to change the views to here. OK, as we're approaching it, we want to flick one thing. Once the arrow crosses zero, we want to use altitude hold on. So scroll down a little bit, there you go. As it crosses it, we just flick the switch. Altitude control is going to hold 7,000. And now we don't have to worry about messing around with this glide wheel, okay? Now in the cruise, if I want to change the power setting, I'll use the mechanical engineer, the automated one. Like they'd use the real one in real life to do all the change of the settings. So I just press cruise, and they'll go through the checklist to set cruise power. Which I can tell you, cruise power should be 36 inches manifold, which is set at 2, and 2250 RPM, which is going to reduce that down to. And he's done that, just as I said. 
the mixture should be changed to auto lean so he's going to change that too after he sets power but it depends on what altitude you are so that right if we were going to go higher than this i'd well, i'd lean or to put it on auto lean just to save some fuel the, the air to fuel ratio mixture which can make it more efficient at higher altitudes that's, that's why they use it so has he left it oh no he's changed it to auto lean yeah so he's done that but it depends on what altitude you are i, I could have left it on rich really here it wouldn't have made much difference now if we're climbing above 16,000 feet have a look in the description below I've I left my own checklist that I've summarized from the PMDG manual to make it quicker and easier for you lot you need to use these fuel injectors um, not a fuel injector sorry a supercharger you need to turn these on in a specific order and you need to change the power setting so I'll put that in the description and basically the reason for having these superchargers is the higher you climb the manifold pressure decreases depending on the altitude of the air affects the the ratios of the engine power so it gets to a point where you keep pushing the manifold pressures which is the throttle levers forward and it gets to the point where you reach an end that that end is called the the critical critical limit um, so in order to get more power you need to use the superchargers and this only happens at higher altitudes before we do set those um, superchargers on there's one thing we need to know as soon as you enable them the manifold pressure will skyrocket up so you need to reduce the manifold pressure when you do when you do select those switches otherwise it will rapidly increase and you're going to do some damage to your engines i need to click through the engine stress bit here and that will tell us if anything it's all color coded if anything is under stress so it'll be yellow if it, it was on moderate stress or if it's really badly it will go red everything's in within range here so we don't need to worry too much about that so back to the flight engineer we're going to let it do all the power settings for simplicity's sake okay but if you wanted to do it manual just turn it off you can press the abort button here and or you can uncheck it here and you'll have manual control right there we go descend now to descend what we got to do we have to turn this off the altitude control because it's holding our altitude and if we try to change our descent using this wheel and this is on um, altitude hold it will not so we have to say disengage that first and now we use the the climb glide wheel never use the trim in this aircraft for changing your rate of descent when the autopilot is on or the auto gyro so when descending we should descend at about a thousand feet a minute we're a little bit fast that should stabilize a little bit okay altitude hold is off use the glide wheels to adjust the trim nose down do not decrease the power to idle okay this is very important okay when we go to descent our flight engineer will change it to 26 inches or you can change it manually if you're flying manually just set 26 inches this is the power setting of manifold that we need Now when you do that the RPM would reduce slightly. So it's going through the checklist. So I have configured the ILS approach. I'll show you how to use that quickly. We've all if you've been following the tutorial you would have programmed it in like me. But as the word is sending to our Altitude. Oh, I lost internet connection back online now. I'm 
I'm going to level up around 3,000. Oh, it should be 2,000. Or, uh, oh, unless it's 2,000, so it's two where it says. And then we'll say we're in range. We'll go through a landing checklist. Cross feed off. off. I love the South Africans accent. No smoking. Signs. No smoking no sign. On. Oh. Yeah, in the range. And we complete it. Okay. We start doing some notch of flaps, maybe. We do it before landing checklist. Slow us down. We should really set flaps where we're at 174 knots where it says here 0 to 30 but for the sake of the simulation for this tutorial I'll, I'll do it otherwise we'll rip our flaps off if we do it above that speed slow us down so we're reaching 2000 feet and what we do as we're approaching it we want to press this uh, altitude control on so we level off there uh, that will do us. Okay. And when we reach Zaza, our final approach point, we will switch to localizer by pressing this here. And you will see this GPS line will change to the localizer which is up here. So as soon as this starts moving in, I'm going to change that to here. So then the autopilot will start following that when I set localize what is read by this set. And they're setting the gear down. Slow us down even more. Okay, wish. ATC hasn't told us yet to uh, tune to full piece. We have to tune to them. We don't have to use ATC to do this, but I'll do it just to give us a guide that what altitude we need to be at. This is where we change to localizer as we are approaching. So what we do, we're on GPS, and as we line up, we're going to press the GPS button, and it will change the V-lock. It's a bit of a bug there. Here we go. Now I've got my mouse. So we're on V-lock mode. As we go back, you should see here. Look, our ILS is in. We're slightly below the flight path. That's okay. And then. We change this here. We don't want to hold altitude. We set to approach, and that will hold the glide slope. Okay, so it's important to set the autopilot mode to approach, and turn the altitude control off. Otherwise, it won't descend with the in line with the glide slope. So the glide slope tells us the slope at which we need to descend at to reach the runway in a safe manner. Now we're a bit. A bit low, so I don't think I'm going to put any more flaps in yet until until we start intercepting the glide slope a bit more. Now it's coming in, slowly coming in. I will hold this speed. The speed is very good for us. Can't see the runway yet. So good thing we got the ILS tuned. This is why we use an ILS, which is an instrument landing system. I've got an Airbus ILS tutorial, so I'll link that in the description also if you want to learn more about ILSs and how they work and an auto land. But this aircraft is not capable of doing auto land. It's not equipped with the ILS CAT system. Alright, so we've got all our landing checklists in. 
All we need to do now is make sure that Glyslug is coming in. Okay. Our flaps are at 20. Leave it there. We're banging line where we should be. I think I can see the runway there. Okay, so we don't need this map anymore. We're perfectly lined up. Um, did we tune the full pace tower? No, we didn't. We'll tell them that we're coming in. So right wing, acknowledge the instructions. And the glide slope is slowly coming in as we're reaching the slope. Can you see that line coming down? Yep. Uh, the auto driver will try and follow this approach by using uh, pitch and trim, but really in real life you would use flaps. Bang on the glide slope. Everything is looking good. The plane is following the glide slope and the ILS. That's our outer marker. Here we go. The plane is making corrections. If we want to fly this manually, what we do, we just disconnect the autopilot here with the auto gyro. I will let it go and see how well it does it. Now we're speeding up, we're going to start thinking about adding one more notch of flaps down. So, whoops. Flaps 30, we should be looking good. Slow us down a little bit more. Knowledge clearance. Now, if you're doing this manually, the BMEP should be around 100. Just set it there and forget it. 90 to 100 is fine. The RPM should be 2400 if you're doing this manually. So our final approach should be 120 knots. So we should add one more notch of flaps. Oh, keep doing the wrong one by mistake. And we're looking really good here. Try and stabilize around 120 knots. Plane is stabilized. Yep. Now I'm going to disconnect the autopilot and fly a manual. Let's keep it on the slope. Try not to make too many corrections. The autopilot was doing such a good job. We've already got our clearance. We didn't get the ATS, but it's not the point of the tutorial. Our glide slope is slightly below, so we're making corrections to come back up. If we're coming too fast, we'll just reduce the flaps. I mean, if we're coming too low, we'll reduce the flaps and go back up on there and then increase the flaps. That's how PMDG recommend we use, we use this plane to descend on final approach. Usually you would use power to adjust rate of descent, but in this plane, they say they use flaps. Okay, we're looking like we're just going to make it with slightly below. 
As we get 10 feet high, we're going to make it. As we get to 10 feet, we reduce the power back. And we pull up slightly, slightly pull up. And we're down. A bit hard, but it's okay, we made it. Full brakes. I'm not going to use the reverses. There's a whole new procedure to do that. Normally I would press X and increase the throttle. Ah, oh, I think it did. It did use up versus. Oh. And we can't skid enough for one way. That's because I use the differential braking. <laughs> That's my bad. Hopefully you will do a lot better. Just don't use differential braking. Uh, use both brakes at the same time. And there you have it. Oh. We got down under the ILS, everything was perfect, and then I screwed up the landing. But there you have it, guys. Keep practicing. The best thing to do is practice, practice, practice. Have a look through at my guide that I've laid down in the description. This will help you a lot if you're flying manually. And happy landings. Also, if you like the video, please like, subscribe for more tutorials and videos. And a few live streams upcoming in the future. I've got one on Saturday with Turtle Beach coming. So I'm going to showcase the yoke in a live stream. So if you're interested in that yoke, subscribe and stay tuned. See ya.